Oh my god. So, 2019, I watched 500 movies. Uh, recently, I just filmed and probably had released just before this my 500 movies watched in 2019. Uh, in totality, I watched about 530 odd films. Um, Letterbox was is a bit confused because, of course, I watched short films as well as like some documentaries that didn't count as actual films and stuff like that. So, joy. So, in this video, which I want to kind of keep brief, is just kind of an examination of the process it took and the effect it had. So initially when I finished uh, 2019, uh, 2018, I had done a video which was like, I watched 100 movies for this, um, which is still a video that's up on my channel where I watched and reviewed 100 movies. And then for Christmas that year, my best friend had given me a 100 movie bucket list poster, which I'd seen the majority of the films, but I hadn't seen a whole bunch of them as well. I still haven't finished the list, but... That mixed with the 100 movies I'd watched, suddenly I was like, oh, how many did I watch in 2018? And I kind of was like, I think I'd watched 300. Um, pretty much at maybe a maximum. Um, so I decided, well, with this whole film shelf and with all the films that are coming out in 2018, sorry, in 2019, let's do 500 movies. And so that's what I started. Um, I started, it was just kind of, uh, I, I just started watching films in the first week of the year and was like, I should totally do 500 movies this year. I have a whole year, 365 days. I can do this. It wasn't even a leap year, but I was like, I can do this. And so I did. Uh, I started doing it, got about 50 through my first month, and I'm like, oh, this is, is going to be easy, you know? Even if I do 50 a month, I can do this easy. But the problem was, that was January. January. Uh, I only had work two, three days a week. Um, by this stage, we'd moved, so it was even harder to get to work. I had the theatre room, so every single day I could come in here and watch films. Summer, so it got pretty hot in here, and it was just, oh, deadly even. And there was just all this extra stuff. I was watching more Criterions, I was watching more 4Ks. And then I had met a girl on New Year's Eve, that obviously that previous year, who started talking to me every day. And so sometimes during movies, she would be texting me, and like, we're talking every single day, and we just kept talking every single day, and... To this day, we are still talking every single day. Uh, she is now my girlfriend, and she makes most of my thumbnails. Her name's Helene, and she's amazing. But that was another thing. I had, she was now a thing I had to, not deal with per se, but like, it was now something that added to my everyday thing, was talking to her. But then it was also seeing her, meeting up with her. Luckily, we went to the same uni, had a pretty decently similar schedule, so we were able to meet most days of the week. Um, well, pretty much just at least one day of the week. Which I think helped, at least for our relationship, because, like, we don't see each other that often, so it, it helps that, you know, one day couldn't be more than enough, you know? It made me more optimistic as well, being like, oh, we could hang out for, like, three hours, and she's like, oh, but it's not enough time to hang out with you. I'm like, yeah, but it's still time. It's not nothing. I was hanging out with my best friend as well, Katie, who I've done uh, interviews uh, with, and I was still filming for this channel, and then uni started, and I had two whole semesters of uni. I had Japan coming up. Uh, in May, at the end of May, so uh, June, for the first two weeks of June, I was going to Japan, and suddenly, like, it came upon me, I'm like, oh my god, how am I going to do this? So suddenly, boom, it was a challenge. So I'd be going at five days a week, I'd have work in uni. I always made sure I had at least one day spare in a week, or a good amount of hours spare, so some day, like, a Monday, for example, would be, oh, I've only got a two-hour class, but it's like an hour, it's like an hour lecture and an hour shoot, and it was just like, uh, couldn't be bothered going to, you know, regular uni problems, so I would skip some classes here and there. Wednesdays, I would be able to skip most of the classes because I was actually repeating a class on the first semester for my Australian screen class, um, which I think I ended up doing a video essay for Wake in Fright? The year before I'd done for Picnic Hang Rock for that class, this year, but for 2019 I did Wake in Fright. So I had a lot of time to myself at the same time. I was still, I, the two things I pretty much dropped in 2019 to focus on this list was making short films because I hadn't, I've had no inspiration to make a short film for a while. I want to, of course. Uh, I think I even wrote a script to do after Japan, but I think that was like, you know. So there was obviously that disappointment, as, that disappointing aspect that I never got around to making a film last year. Uh, which sucks, you know, but, you know, as things happen, that's just what happens. Um, and it's not like this channel is built for short films, but I'd like doing it, of course. 
and I also didn't do any more interviews after January uh, for that interview show. I have more in mind. I have. I didn't have. I just didn't meet any people to, to interview or whatever. So. Presently, I have two interviews in mind that I want to do. All right, 2020 already has its own things of like my current work and getting a new job and finishing uni, a whole bunch of other stuff. You can see that in my update video for the year. But 2019 had all these other problems. Um, and it was just, there was so much to do. Like it was also a decision of should I make monuments of the films, you know, which one should be number 200? I got to make sure I watch from start to finish and, you know, even if I'm pausing it to go on the you know, toilet breaks or grab food or go out and then come back and finish it, it still would count. And so the first half of the year leading up to June when I went to Japan was pretty easy because I was making sure that I was focusing on my assignments, making sure that I was prepping for Japan so I was able to have enough videos that would come out beforehand and then come out afterwards. I was making sure that I had my assignments done well in advance so I wouldn't have to be worrying about them while I was in Japan because obviously my assignments were due while I was in Japan. And by the time Japan came around, the idea of watching films was out the window because it's like, look, I'm not bringing my laptop, I'm not bringing all that extra gear because A, very unsafe, B, it's extra weight and it's already a warmer month because it's June so it's like springtime in Japan and it was like nah nah it's not happening I'm not doing that so I didn't by that stage it was more a concern of can I still talk to my girlfriend every single day I did luckily we had an internet modem that we were able to um, purchase while we were there which was really cool so when it came to watching films for Japan which I noted in, in my 500 movies video, which films I was able to watch on the plane, binge as many as I could. I only watched two on the plane, but then I watched Godzilla King of the Monsters two days later uh, in Tokyo theaters and whatever, in Tokyo cinema, Toho cinema in Tokyo. And then we didn't watch another film for another week. We get to the middle of the second week, the second and last week, and we just had all this extra time. You know, We had a whole night to ourselves, so we're like, hey, let's go watch a film. We went to the cinemas and there was nothing. We, there was no more English films, which wasn't, of course, the problem. We weren't exactly expecting to watch an English film, but there was, like, I think there was, like, there was some that I was at least mildly interested in watching, but none that we could watch at the time. And so we were just looking up all the films that were still on. There was a film on at, like, 9 o'clock, you know. Uh, we didn't have to get up too early the next day, which was fine. So we're like, that's right, we can watch this film. It might go till midnight, but that's totally cool. We lived, like, a, a five-minute walk from the, um, like, we'll stand in a hotel five minutes away from the um, cinema. And so that's when, of course, we watched uh, The Confidence Man, JP, the movie. And we went in the theatre. Really fun experience. Um, and as it was, like, you know, the, going to Godzilla was, it was like a big, it was like a big, you know, extreme screen cinema kind of thing, you know, like premium cinemas with great seating and big screen, great sound system. <laughs> Fucking hilarious ads. And then we got to doing JP, the, you know, the, the Confidence Man, and I was in a very small theatre. It was only like four rows. And there wasn't too many people on the, on the screen, which was nice. But at the same time, you notice the thing when you're watching a film in Japan is that they don't laugh or cry or applaud. They're silent, you know. They um, are completely respectful of everyone else in the theatre, which is amazing. So when it came to watching The Confidence Man, we were like, fuck. First thing... Uh, we couldn't obviously talk to each other. We sometimes did, like, joked about this and that or whatever. We didn't really, we didn't want to make a mockery of anything that was happening. So we were being respectful too. But then the rest of the movie was also in Japanese with no subtitles. Because, of course, it's a, you know, locally Japanese theatre. You know, wouldn't expect too many English-speaking tourists to come by. And if they did, they could go and watch their American or English movies. So that was like, okay. The trailer looked fun, so we went and watching it, uh, and honestly had a blast. Uh, it was like it was one of those films. It's in my Masami Nagasawa video, but it was one of those films that was so visual, you can understand everything that was happening. Someday I'll get the Blu-ray of it when it comes out and it has English subtitles because I'd love to know what the fuck they were saying. <laughs> um, so once that was done, we got the plane uh, home a few days later, and suddenly it was like, oh hey, we got a ten-hour flight ahead of us. And we're not allowed to sleep. Well, we could, but it was daytime. You know, we went and caught the flight at like 8 a.m. expecting to get back at like 10, 11 p.m. We had a whole flight to ourselves to watch anything. Hence, I watched five movies. Kind of caught up a little. Like, 
Couldn't catch up per- completely because, of course, that whole entire previous week was dead, no movies there. But then it was just like one, two, three, four, five. Like suddenly, boom! Every single movie I could finally get, I could get into watching. Uh, I think two of them were Japanese. One being Masquerade Hotel, uh, which also had Masami Nagasawa, which may influence me, inspired me to do a video on her. Especially when I got home, I was like, oh my god, she's in three other movies I own. So that was really fun. Uh, and then, of course, got back to Australia, had a week off, and uh, from work, obviously no uni for ne- for the next two months. Yeah, so I was able to get back into the flow of watching more films. Uh, catching up with friends uh, was also a good way to watch films as well. Because it wasn't just Netflix or the films I had here, or going to cinemas by myself. It's like, hey, go see it with your girlfriend, go see it with your best friend, go see it with your uni friends. Um... All these different people I could see films with. And so then the next two months, I'd say I'd say between June and September, it was going pretty well. Then we get to October, and I had a major burnout. And this is why I wanted to make this video, because it was... Like, there's a point where you watch so many films that you just... It's like going to work every day. You go to the same dead-end job that you hate, every single day and you just get sick and tired of it and you go your mind goes numb you get depressed you want to fucking either quit or kill yourself or something dramatic and i was feeling that at my own job japan helped me out a lot with that that was a because i had the week before i went to japan off like inconveniently because my boss hadn't actually hired me on for the week because she thought that i wasn't uh, available she thought i was already in japan because some people are idiots um and but I actually uh, had a cold that week, so I was totally cool with it. So I was like, okay, cool. Have that week off, two weeks Japan, have the extra week off afterwards, uh, and then start going back to work. So I had a whole month off. So that helped my mind for that. That was really good. But then, because I was watching so many films, and I was, like, I was, some weekends I was, like, watching, especially towards the end of October, and uh, not the end of October, towards the middle to end of November, I spent two whole weekends watching 13, 15 films between, like, Friday and Monday, because I had, like, Friday um, of uni, and I could, if I skipped the day, I could watch movies. If not, but some of those Fridays were, like, public holidays, you know, uh, grand, fi- uh, grand final day for footy and shit like that. Um, so I watched, like, a whole bunch of films that weekend. I had the uh, mid-semester break, watched a whole bunch of films uh, for then, like, so many films, and it was just becoming a detriment to my mind. Like, I just couldn't handle any more, like... I couldn't watch a film and connect to the characters. I just couldn't connect to the film. Uh, I was completely withdrawn because I was just so... I was just digesting too much. And then I became depressed. So as it was, like, November, I wasn't depressed because... But the, the movie problem was still a problem. I became depressed in October... It was only for uh, a month, maybe till the the first week of uh, November. This is actually only because of my twenty first, because I had had this big thing planned to have was had all this time building up to it. You know, all this excitement coming into it. I was like, you know, gonna have Halloween decorations, gonna have all my friends come over, and I was getting depressed in the weeks weeks leading up to it because I just thought that it would be the last big thing I'd ever have in my life, which is fucking depressing as it is. Of course, it's not the last big thing I've ever, ever had in my life. I haven't planned anything post that. There was nothing. You know, at least in the early in the year, I had Japan. Now I had, oh, just go back to work, finish uni, and just, ugh, oh, there was nothing. But now I have the benefit of, oh, get a new job at this particular media place, which would be great. Doing more of these videos, of course, the shelf, going on a trip with my girlfriend. There's a lot more I've got now, which is great. But I just wasn't thinking that thoroughly about it. And I became depressed, and it was harder to watch films. And my birthday, as it was, was I was still pretty depressed on the day uh, during the party, um, but I I still had fun. Look, um, I mean, look, any of my friends who are watching who were there, I still had fun. Um, you know, had people come over. We played a bunch of video games. Uh, we played some a card game on the table. It was, you know, had the cake. It was still fun. It wasn't exactly what I'd planned. Like, initially it was like, oh, everyone will come over, we'll be a lot of chatting, games in this room, a movie in that room, or vice versa. I could. Sh- it was meant to be an overnight thing, so I'd show everyone a movie that I could only show them and that no one else really could. 
and it was meant to be this really big thing, but it just didn't become that. I still had a lot of fun. The Halloween decorations was probably the best part of it. Because, you know, I got to spend a whole day with my girlfriend just going shopping and buying stuff and then de decorating everything. Uh, Sam's girlfriend, Nikki, had provided a, a help with a lot of, like, tubs worth of stuff uh, for the decorations, which was amazing as well. And I still, we still have, oh, we, we've kept all of the decorations. Like, I still have the 21st balloons. I still have the skeleton that's now just in front of me in the theater room and will probably remain there for years to come. And I had a lot of fun. Even though I was still pretty, you know, shaken up on the day, a lot of my friends couldn't make it. My best friend bailed out on me as well. It was shitty, you know? Like, I couldn't exactly blame her, but at the same time, there was all these occasions, all these things that went into it, and it was just shitty. And movies, the one escape I had just wasn't helping me anymore, you know? I would go through two, three movies a day sometimes, even the first half of the year. I had a class where... Every week I'd go back to it and they'd be like, so how many movies are you on now? How many movies are you on? Because, like, the intro class, you know, you had to tell us a fun fact about yourself. I'm like, oh, this mo this year I'm aiming to watch 500 movies. And they're like, what? You what? Are you kidding me? But after November passed and I got into December, in the first two weeks, I went from, f I, I was up to, from 450 to, I, I don't even remember how many I'd gotten up to by the end, by the end of November. I'd gone into a lot. I didn't have many more left. Uh, by the time December came, so I took time, I just chilled, uh, like, I spent a whole week, in like, I spent a whole month not seeing my best friend, because we were so, I was so busy, and I really hated that, uh, and I felt shitty when we finally got back together to, to hang out again, but it was cool, because me and my best friend have a connection that was just like, ah, fuck it, who cares, <laughs> you know, and it's great, and I really appreciate that about our relationship, you know, I was seeing my girl, I spent a whole week hanging out with my girlfriend, I had a whole week where I was editing videos for all of November, because I'm like, gotta do it all, you know, get it all done, go uh, on Saturday on the weekend, upload all of them in one swoop, so I don't have to go uh, to uni again in December, um, and there was a lot of pressure on me um, to do all of that, like, I didn't need to watch YouTube, it's not that big a deal, but, like, for me, it was. Um, and then December comes, and I don't have to film videos anymore. I mean, I did. I filmed a bunch of collection ones, and I was like, oh, hey, I should do my Arrow video collection. I should do, uh, you know, Criterion and stuff like that, and my slipcase and my steelbook. So I did that, and, of course, that's been my videos now for the past month and a bit, um, which has proven really nice. Uh, you know, I the videos that came out in December weren't all very popular but at the same time I don't really I think she I think it was really just the Friday the 13th and Johnny Depp ones that didn't do well but all the rest of them did pretty well you know suddenly you know my Masami Nagasawa video was exploding in views it's got nervous 600 I'm like what the fuck is happening what why do people like this video so much it was great I love it but it's like I'm so confused uh my stillbook video came out that's gotten a lot of views my um the video off the video essay I did on the office also just wowza it was shocking how many views some of these were getting. And, you know, I my top 10 video were all past 100 uh, views. Uh, like, two of my Lachlan Reviews videos were 330-odd. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And that was helping. You know, I was buying a lot of stuff from October through to December, both because October, my birthday month, bye, 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 bye. Um, and then November was all this birthday money plus got to get stuff for Christmas for everyone. Then December was like, I just bought a few little knickknacks for myself and stuff, you know. Pre-ordered the Twin Peaks box set. Going to do an unboxing on that when it comes in. I had Godzilla coming in the mail. It was just so much stuff happening. And suddenly life was exciting again. And I was able to get up to my final week with watching 500 movies. And I did it. And even though, I guess, in reality, Jean, Jean Dielman, Jean Dielman, however the fuck you pronounce it, why did I choose that film for my 500th film? But that film, even though it was my 500th, uh, I wrote down on my list, and even though I scrapped free from my list uh, to make, pretty much make it my 500th movie, uh, though I was able to legitimately scrap them, of course, it wasn't my actual 500th movie of the year. Um, and it doesn't matter. I mean, technically, Godzilla was in terms of original watches, uh, which is also totally amazing. It doesn't matter, you know. The point of the matter is the fact that I watched over 500 movies last year. I mean, there's all those rewatches as well. I watched a lot. And I like now that in 2020, it's like, new decade, kind of freshed up, 
take my time watching films, I can rewatch more films now because it's like, hey, I can watch Scott Pilgrim again, you know, because um, I was waiting all year to hit 500 so I could finally watch Gremlins again, even though I'd watched it at the start of the year because at the end of the year, I'd upgraded from my DVD to a fucking 4K and I had uh, Gremlins 2 on Blu-ray now and I was just like, what the hell? I don't want to watch these now. It was a lot of fun. Look, it was, it had its nightmarish parts, but overall, it was really an experience. Um, And I think it really welded the year together. Like, some years, I can forget a lot of what happens, but 2019, met and fell in love with my now girlfriend. Uh, Had a hell of a lot of fun with my best friend. Japan was killer. Work was pretty okay. Um... Uni was fun and even got sad to the end of it where in my last class, I, a YouTuber I follow who's actually my lecturer, Dan Golding, I think it was the last, I pretty much was like, this is pretty much the last class I'm ever going to have with you because I knew what my next class was and he wasn't going to be a part of it. And so I even shook his, like he's the guy who did, who made the music for the, that, the Untitled Goose game. He was my lecturer. The guy who made the music for that game. So, and like my brother, I got my brother to play that game. Who, you know, Sam, who is big on playing games. He made a YouTube video on it. And like, I was able to play a bit of it too. I, you know, was able to tell Dan, I'm like, the game's great. You know, and on the last day when I was there, I was like, hey, look, you inspired me to make video essays. Um, and you've made, because he was my first ever lecturer. And he's made my whole entire uni experience amazing as well. And so I was able to thank him for that. And so that was really really quite a good, even though it's not my last class, because uh, I've got one more left for 2020, it was just a nice moment for me. And then there was Kaz, who I planned to interview, if it's possible, that would be amazing. Um, and she was also my first proper, like, not my first, I think she wasn't my first tutor, my first tutor was Andy, but she was, in my first week, she was my last tutor, and it was a Friday night, f- Friday afternoon thing at like 3 o'clock, and nobody wanted to go to it, and I went to it, and suddenly it was just like, it was just chill. She just didn't give a fuck. She was just like, let's talk about movies. And I'm like, I'm in. This is great. And Kaz was great. And in that class, I met Guy. And I remember the first six weeks of that, I think like the first ten weeks of that uh, semester, um, I was in class. I think I was with Pierre. And I was with Pierre every week. And Guy was just in the class. And I remember him and I had like some kind of heated discussion sometimes. Like, we would talk about the alien films in class with each other. And I was just like, just like, fuck, I hate this guy. He doesn't like this or he doesn't like that. But then one day I just got to class and, like an hour early. So did he. And there was nothing happening. And none of my other friends were showing up because I think like Pierre was sick. Uh, and we just were like, hey, let's chat. So we just did and we've been friends ever since. So that it, and it was nice to see Kaz in that last class, my last tutor. And she might be in my tutor for next semester. Fuck, I hope so. Like, like mid-winter mid break. I'd love that to happen. Um, it would be amazing. Um, but as it was, you know, I even hugged her. I was like, hey, you know, thanks for... If you're not my tutor next year, thanks for all these years. Um, you know, she was the one who influenced me to watch more David Lynch. Uh, we had the David Lynch Club together. It was great. So, yeah. 2020 was a big, 2019 was a big year. And I really enjoyed it. So even though this 500 movies was kind of a burden and could have been, and was annoying at some times, I had my friends with me. I had my family. I had Helene. I had Katie. I had great teachers, a uh, great class, even my colleagues, great people. Um, <laughs> my son. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it was just... It was nice. And for the most part, probably none of them are going to watch this video, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, so thanks for watching. Um, tell me how many films you watched in 2019, and if you think I'm crazy for watching 500. I am. Oh, <laughs> Why 500? Because I'm not doing 1,000. 600 just feels off. 700 just feels off. 800? I could do 800, but way too many. Look, realistically, it's humanly possible to watch, like, probably a thousand films in a year. But, even if it was, like, three to four films a day, like, everything you're doing was watching films. Imagine that's all you did. If if you had no worries about getting paid or food was delivered to you, all this other stuff. If you had all the money in the world and you didn't have to worry about friends or family or any human connectiveness, yeah, you could do it. But what would the consequence be? 
See you next time. Feel free to check out my 500 movies of 2019 here. See ya.